to get a cooking demo from my friend Daria Pino Rose, and we talked about how to stay healthy during the impending apocalypse. Now, we all know that we're gonna look very svelte, very skinny, because we won't have enough food, but how do you keep your vitamins and minerals up? What should we be eating? After all, Twinkies, not a good diet. Daria, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, it's great to be here. Now, I'm a little bit concerned about my nutrition and health during the apocalypse, but before we get to that, can you tell me a little bit about Foodist? Yeah, Foodist is my new book. Uh, it's basically about how to make your life awesome through food. Eating food that tastes amazing, but also makes you healthy, thin, fit, all those things that we all want all the time without life sucking. <laughs> well, life is gonna suck pretty bad when the apocalypse happens, obviously. Right. Um, so I know there's not gonna be a lot of food that we can get relatively easily. What can we do with what we can get, or what do you think will stick around? So I was thinking you have like a couple different tactics to take, right? First, we can go and go through pantries and warehouses and other food supplies and see what might have survived. And I'm guessing things dried goods, like I today I brought some lentils for us to try to cook and some grains like rice, quinoa, things like that. That stuff will last a really long time. Then you can also forage a little bit. There's probably going to be some weeds surviving and maybe some other little critters and creatures around that we can maybe make use of. For the apocalypse, what would we do? What would we grab first from the supermarket when we go scavenging to try to get as much as possible for our inevitable trip to someplace safer? Yeah, I would think of camping. Like you want things that are small and light and also very high in calories and nutrient dense. So things like nuts, dried fruit that'll last a long time, grains, and beans, things like that. Also, you can, uh, if you can find anything in a can that's like meat in a can, like tuna, canned fish are great. Things like that is gonna be your best bet. Nice, well speaking of things tasting really nice, maybe we should get to some cooking. Okay, so now we've got some pots and pans and we've got some, looks like quinoa and what's that, black, black lentils? Yeah, I figured lentils and quinoa would be a great place to start because they cook pretty easily and you don't really need any recipe. You just basically boil them until uh -huh. they're soft enough to eat. So I'll put the quinoa in here. You can stick the lentils in there. Maybe uh, stick like half that in there. Half of this? Yeah. Put some water in these and get water? them started. Okay. Yeah, on the fire. To, to on the a sink. rustic fire. I don't know. If you manage to find any salt, it would be great to throw some salt in with the lentils. Make it taste better. One bonus is that if there are zombies, the fire will likely scare them away. But for produce, what are we looking at? I was mainly looking for things that we could be, that would be incredibly useful in, in, in the sense that you can use both the bottom that grows underground and the leaves are also edible. So I got, a, these are uh, salad turnips. I also brought some, um, some radishes. Yum, which is, I love radishes. Oh yeah, and the leaves are great. Have you ever eaten them? I haven't, no. They're really delicious. Yeah, so we're gonna cut those off and like throw them all in so we have the most nutritious meal possible. There's this is a cool weed that grows sort of easily like a weed. It's called purslane. Ooh. And it's really, really nutritious. It's got a lot of healthy omega-3 fatty acids for a plant. And it's got this sort of lemony flavor, and it's and you can probably find it growing around. It is lemony. So we're just gonna cut this up and then wait for those to finish. All right. Generally speaking, the more different colors you are gonna be getting in your dish, like the less likely you are to be depriving yourself of some essential life-giving nutrient. So just on the off chance that you may not have a fine mesh strainer at, in the post-apocalypse, um, Let's try to do this the, the old fashioned way. Put the lid there and just dump the water off. I'd probably be using the fine mesh strainer as for my tinfoil hat <laughs> to guard against evil thoughts and radiation. Ooh, pretty. So I actually have um, one more thing that I thought that we could try. Okay. And I actually went and got us some crickets. What? And some uh, wax moth larvae because I think bugs are gonna be in a excellent source of protein. I was only interested in trying the crickets, but the woman insisted. She says these wax moth larvae are her favorite. I've always been a person who would, who would say, oh yeah, I totally eat bugs. Like I would totally do that, like I'm brave. And now that I know that bugs are in the picture, I'm getting a little nervous, but I trust you. <laughs> and I just wanna cook these all together because we're just saving time and space. And yeah. Energy here. So it's just, you just toast them up. You can eat these on their own too. You can make tacos. Larvae tacos. Mm. Oh boy. I'm gonna go for it. Okay. I'm gonna go waff, moth larvae. It's like a, like one of those like pumpkin nuts, like pumpkin seeds. Yeah, it's kind of, it doesn't really taste like much. Yeah, kind of tasty. It tastes more like, it tastes more like crunchy than anything else. I'm gonna do a cricket now, cause that scares me the most. I've done this before, but it doesn't get any easier. <laughs> Mm. You know, it's not bad. It's really not bad. Okay, you did it. I can do it. You can do it. Okay, I can do it. I need salt, one. for sure. I just drank some water and then I started thinking I'm like rehydrating them in my mouth. 
So they're like going, it, never mind. It was That's a gross horrible. thought. All right, well, these are looking pretty tender, and I did a little taste tester, so. Okay. We're just gonna do the same thing we did with the other ones. The hope, straining. Hope I don't burn myself. Straining. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't do that. Hot lentils coming through. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just mix all this beautiful stuff together and um, put a little dressing. I mean, you don't, I'm not gonna make a fancy dressing. Mm -hmm. If you don't have meat, like bugs available or any kind of protein available, it is a good idea to include both a grain and a legume because they're going to have complementary proteins. Okay. That actually become a complete protein that your body gets all of it that it needs. In go our turnips and our radishes. Turnips and our radishes, and I cut up a little spring onion in there because it grows easily as well. And then I just sprinkle in some of your radish greens, turnip greens, and your purslane weeds. And then uh, let's stir it. So I'm gonna just add the bugs because I think bugs are, make it better. Mix it all Look together. at that, this is like the most tr nutritious, delicious apocalypse food you could ever have. I think we should eat. Nice. Mmm, weeds and lentils and bugs. Oh my. <laughs> Thank you. V. And oh wow, that is really good. I've gotta turn up with a bug on it. Mmm, really good. We ate bugs. So what? So basically I was posing the question to her, can we still stay healthy during the apocalypse or are we doomed to just eat Twinkies until our species dwindles out? And yes, I think we can. If we learn the right plants and vegetables to pick from the ground and forage for, and if we, you know, get past the whole bug eating thing, I think we'll make it.